Jones Mwaruma could not have come at a better time. And I'm really hoping that uh, the Committee on Devolution of this House... Now, Senator Sifuna. Yes. That statement was actually dropped. Oh. But allow me to say one thing, uh, Honorable... Honorable so, Speaker. So don't comment on it. Yes, because no. I, I caught the tail end of the submissions by my colleague from Nandi uh, on uh, some of the unfortunate uh, pronouncements we had from the National Assembly yesterday uh, regarding the decision by this House to award 415 million shillings to uh, county governments. Honorable Speaker, I think there are things that we as a House have to make very clear. Number one, when we ask for more resources to be devolved to county governments, it's not to take away from the CDF or the National Affirmative Action Fund uh, in the National Assembly. I think what uh, uh, some honorable members in the National Assembly were trying to do is to poison the mind of Kenyans that, in fact, we're going to raise those funds in order to raise the $24 billion extra that this House passed for county governments. Number two, honorable speaker, I want the National Assembly also to address itself to the question of whether there is corruption, mismanagement, and misuse of resources in the national government. So that when they stand up and castigate uh, county governments and say, oh, all these people travel with their girlfriends, it's not as if officers in the national uh, government do not have girlfriends that they travel with. Mr. Speaker, if we are going to have a conversation, I think that conversation has to be an objective conversation. Mr. Speaker, finally, there has to be also a time that in this country, we demonstrate to each individual county how the money that has been allocated to the national government is spread across the 47 counties. Because there is inordinate uh, uh, focus, Mr. Speaker, on the money that is sent to counties from this particular uh, house, and it represents less than 10% of the budget. Mr. Speaker, every time you ask, why are roads not being built in Nairobi? Mr. Speaker, in Nairobi alone, we have 50 stall road projects. When you ask, you say, oh, but Nairobi received 20 billion shillings. Mr. Speaker, an analysis was done of the distribution of resources at the national level from the Kenya Rural Roads uh, Authority and from Kenya. Mr. Speaker, and by illustration, this was an analysis of the constituencies allocation from Kera and Kura in Kiambu County. And we will not be surprised that the person who was castigating Senate yesterday, the Honorable Kimani Ichungwa, the Member of Parliament for, uh, uh, for Kikuyu, Mr. Speaker, out of the uh, money that is allocated, 200, 350 million shillings allocated to Kiambu County and Akura, 220 million shillings has somehow found its way to Kikuyu constituency from where this Member of Parliament comes from. Mr. Speaker, 94% of the money under Kera is utilized in Kikuyu constituency alone, uh, 1.45 billion shillings, Mr. Speaker. And if you ask Honorable Ichungwa to add money to the counties, Nairobi alone, Mr. Speaker, the bill for electricity that is owed to Kenya Power is 1.5 billion shillings, Mr. Speaker, so that the money that what, Ichungwa what is receives is enough Senator to pay our Gloria. electricity bills. Senator here. Gloria, what is your point of order? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am aware we are discussing uh, county issues, but Mr. Speaker, we still have to be guided by our standing orders. And they are very clear about discussing any other member of, a member of parliament, either from the Senate, Mr. Speaker, or from here. And imputing improper motive, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and I, and I understand, Mr. Speaker, order, allow me. Honorable, order, I'll, I'll allow me. Faki, order. Mr. Proceed. Speaker, protect me. I'm just saying. I understand that we are trying to highlight on the issues of devolution, Mr. Speaker, but can the Honorable Senator of Nairobi uh, try and make his point without discussing another member of parliament who is actually not in the House, Mr. Speaker? What, that is my point of Senator order. Senator Gloria, which standing order has been violated? Mr. Speaker, on, I think it's 98, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, just allow me, because I know that this is how we are used to, to sitting me down. There is even a content 101, Mr. Speaker, contents of speech. Uh, if you go to 1013, it shall be out of order to use offensive or insulting language, whether in respect of the senators or other. 
Now, a fourth, no senator shall impute improper motive to any other senator or to a member of National Assembly except upon a specific and substan substantive motion of which at least three days' notice has to be given, calling in question the conduct of the, that senator or member of parliament. Mr. Speaker, if we want to discuss about uh, the honorable member of parliament, uh, Kimani Shungwa, Mr. Speaker, Sifuna should just bring a substantive motion and we can discuss his budget of his constituency and whether he's using his money or not. Mr. Speaker, Kimani Shungwa is not in the house today, so let uh, Sifuna limit his his elaborations and discussions to devolution and whatever is we're leaving out Kimani Shungwa from this situation. Thank you. Order, order honorable senators. The senator for Nairobi, uh, as you make your intervention, kindly adhere to that standing order. Do not impute any proper motive on either your honorable colleague senators or a member of parliament. So kindly proceed as advised. I, I am well guided, uh, Honorable Speaker, but I was thinking that colleagues in this House would be more defensive of the decisions Order. of this House uh, because yesterday the entire Senate was being discussed, Honorable Speaker. And in fact, in fact, Mr. Speaker, Order, Honorable Senator. Mr. Speaker, I was, this is an extract of an analysis of the road allocations by those two national government entities in Kiambu County as a Order, demonstration. Senator Gloria. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Proceed. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you must protect me from people who think that by rising on points of order against me, I'm going to make them famous. Because I see them sharing, sharing on, on social media that Sifuna and so and so are in an exchange. You will have to find your own fame by the quality of debate you bring to this floor. Proceed, Mr. Speaker, let me conclude. Let me conclude by saying... Uh, my, my, let me conclude by saying this, Mr. Speaker. Proceed to conclude. That the discussion about allocation of resources about the needs of the county governments and the challenges to devolution have to be had in a sober space and with context, Mr. Speaker, because as I was explaining to you before the point of order, 1.4 billion shillings, Mr. Speaker, is the amount of money that we require as Nairobi to pay off all our debts at Kenya Power so that these, all these members who come to Nairobi from those rural constituencies can continue to enjoy those services that the city provides. So when people come here and castigate and castigate decisions of this Senate, Mr. Speaker, and attack devolution on the basis of malpractices here and there. Yet those similar malpractices are actually present even in the national government. And I will be hoping, Speaker, as I conclude, that when this House puts together its mediation team, they will send serious senators to the mediation team who will not go there to, tell, to try and defend Kimani Chungwa. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order, Order Honorable Senators. Before I ask the clerk to call the next order, I have this message to pass. <laughs> Honorable Senators, I wish to report to the Senate that I have pursuant to Standing Order 46.3 received the following message from the Speaker of the National Assembly regarding the decision of the National Assembly on the Senate amendments to the Division of Revenue Bill, National Assembly Bills Number 14 of 2024. The message dated Tuesday 14th of May 2024 was received in the office of the clerk of the Senate on the same date. Now pursuant to standing order 46.4, I now report the message. Pursuant to the provisions of standing order 41.1 and 148B of the National Assembly standing orders, I hereby convey the following message from the National Assembly. Whereas on Wednesday 20th of March 2024, the National Assembly passed the Division of Revenue Bill National Assembly Bill Number 14 of 2024, and thereafter refer the bill to the Senate for consideration in, in accordance with Article 1104 of the Constitution. And whereas on Thursday, the 2nd of May 2024, the Senate considered and passed the said bill with amendments and referred it back to the National Assembly for concurrence. Further, whereas on Monday, 13th May of 2024, the National Assembly considered and rejected the Senate amendments to the bill, thereby committing it to a mediation committee in accordance with the provisions of Article 112.2 of the Constitution. Now, therefore, in accordance with the provisions of Article 112 of the Constitution and Standing Orders 41.1 and 148B of the National Assembly Standing Orders, I hereby convey the said decision of the National Assembly to the Senate and seek the appointment of nine senators to a mediation committee to consider the bill in accordance with Article 113 of the Constitution. 
Honorable Senators, consequent to the said decision, the Speaker of the National Assembly appointed the following members of the National Assembly to the Mediation Committee to consider the bill in accordance with Article 113 of the Constitution. The Honorable Dini Nyoro, MP, the Honorable Mary M.I., MP, the Honorable David Ochieng, MP, the Honorable Nyakundi Mokaya, MP, the Honorable Samuel Moroto, MP, the Honorable Samuel Atandi, MP, the Honorable Naisula Lesuda, MP, the Honorable Dr. Makali Mulu, MP, and the Honorable Ali Wario Guyo, MP. Now, Honorable Senators, pursuant to the provisions of standing order 166 2 of the Senate, and in consultation with the majority and minority leaders, I will, at the appropriate time, appoint Senators to the Mediation Committee. I thank you. Next order. Next order, Clark. You don't comment on messages, uh, Senator for Nyandarwa. Okay, honorable, honorable senators, honorable senators, honorable senators, I will, with, with the limited powers given to me and a standing order one of the Senate standing orders, I will allow limited comments on that message three from the majority side and three from the minority side, yes. each speaking for three minutes. Yes. Senator Fonandi. Yeah. Let me go here so that uh, it is captured. Mr. Speaker, uh, thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, I want to repeat. The reason as the majority side we supported an increment of 24 billion to 415 billion is to ensure there is equitable and equality in terms of development across the country. Mr. Speaker, it is a shaming. It is unfortunate that members of National Assembly, without running a fall of Standing Order 101, yesterday misled the country by saying we were removing CDF, Sijui Kera money. How, Mr. Speaker, and I'm wondering how can they mislead the whole country? In fact, he asked Mr. Speaker, asking for 415 billion, Mr. Speaker. He's being modest. He's being modest considering the, the budget of the country is 4 trillion. Mr. Speaker, in fact, the National Assembly must blame himself because the latest audited account, Mr. Speaker, is them who have taken behind. It will become a hand, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to ask. In fact, I'm donating myself for free to be part of mediation so that I can fix them, Mr. Speaker at the floor of the house, Mr. Speaker. Because as Bob Marley said before he died at 36 years old, Mr. Speaker, in 1981, more fire, Mr. Speaker. He said it is, there is much too honest in terms of running a society, Mr. Speaker. I want to challenge, and I know the National Assembly, Mr. Speaker, let us allow counties have for 15 billion. Let us develop our counties, Mr. Speaker. Even if there are corruption, let us fight corruption, but give money to counties for development, Mr. Speaker. Senator Kajuan. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the nation must know that revenue is divided in parliament. It is not divided at IBEC. It is not divided in Karen. It is not divided in private residences. And Mr. Speaker, I am very proud of this Senate and more so the chair of the finance committee and the members of the finance committee for standing up for county governments and for reasserting the role of Senate as a house that divides and allocates revenue. Mr. Speaker, when we set up that uh, mediation committee, I hope we will put in men and women senators with spine because in the 11th parliament, we had mediation every year. In the 12th parliament, we had mediation three out of five years. Mr. Speaker. Senator Kajuan, are you implying that we have senators without spine? Yes. <laughs> proceed. Proceed. 
Mr. S Mr. Speaker, we have a lot of senators with spine, not all of them. But Mr. Speaker, I hope that the Mediation Committee will stand firm for the Senate, and they will not be intimidated by political party and partisan politics. This is about county governments, this is not about Kenya Kwanzaa, this is not about Azimio, and we hope that the way we stood up when you are coming up with a formula for revenue allocation, that this Senate will stand up to be counted. Where the Council of Governors failed at IBEC, where the National, the, the count, the National Assembly is failing county governments, that the Senate will be the house that lives up to defend and protect the interests of counties and their governments. And to the members of the National Assembly, when this money goes to counties, really, this money goes to constituencies. What we have seen of CDF, of course, there are some things on the ground we have seen, but we have also seen the cars in the parking lot coming from CDF. Let us be honest. You cannot be pointing fingers at governors and also not looking at what the, the, the road and the problems that we have seen in allocation and distribution of the resources that should go to CDF. Mr. Speaker, the Supreme Court said that this House must be involved in decisions to do with the NGCDF, with the NGAF. And Mr. Speaker, we look forward to the day that that legislative proposal will be brought before the Senate because the Senate will do the right thing and make sure that we respect the two levels of government in this country, national and county governments. Those are the two levels of government in the Constitution. Those other creatures were of the past Constitution. Mr. Speaker, the Senate is going to do the right thing. And the men and women in that mediation committee, please do not do what they did with Lin Turi. Shame on them. Shame. Senator Methu. Honorable Speaker, we watched uh, with great disappointment yesterday, Honorable Speaker, as our colleagues were misleading the nation. And Honorable Speaker, there is something that we would want to demonstrate that was not demonstrated at the National Assembly yesterday. When they proposed that counties get 395 billion, what, 391 billion, how much had they gotten last year? They had gotten 385 billion, an addition of just 6 billion. What is the growth in the national budget? If the growth in the national budget is over 400 billion, how do you send 6, uh, 6 uh, billion to the counties, Honorable Speaker? Honorable Speaker, we cannot, uh, we cannot purport to keep uh, telling governors, we want you to employ more doctors, we want you to employ more nurses, we want you to employ more uh, ECD teachers, Honorable Speaker. And, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, we are not sending money, money there. Where do you expect these governors to, to, uh, to work from, Honorable Speaker? Number two, Honorable Speaker, there has not and there shall never be a competition between devolution and uh, CDF, Honorable Speaker. If anything, the courts have pronounced themselves on the position of uh, CDF, Honorable Speaker. For CDF to be uh, constitutional, it has to come to this House, Honorable Speaker, so that we shall also make our voice known, Honorable Speaker. This argument cannot be one-sided, Honorable Speaker, that Honorable, uh, 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 Honorable Members of, uh, of the National Assembly, Honorable Speaker, are the umpires and they are the judges of who is working, who is not working. I, have you, where have you gotten, uh, where have you get, gotten approval that uh, what is working is only uh, NGCDF and uh, Gov Honorable Speaker yeah. and devolution is not working Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, we want medicine in our hospitals Honorable Speaker. I sit in the Public Accounts Committee Honorable Speaker. Yes. We are saying that uh, we want counties to, uh, to, to improve in services, uh, in service delivery Honorable Speaker. Much of the, uh, of the functions that we are saying are being, uh, should be pushed to the county government. If we push services to the county government without resources, how are they, uh, how are they expected to offer these services, Honorable Speaker? Finally, they say, when you want to kill a dog, you give it a bad name. Now, devolution is being killed because of a malpractice here, another malpractice there, another malpractice there. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Senator Kajuang and I sit in a committee called Public Accounts Committee. We have seen governors who have got, gotten unqualified audit opinions, Honorable Speaker. It is to mean that devolution is working in some counties, Honorable Speaker. Yes. If governors are not working, yes. if devolution is not working, yes. it is in your county on, uh, and you have the ability to elect a governor that is working, Honorable yes. Speaker. We cannot kill devolution because we have a bad governor, we have a raw governor somewhere, Honorable Speaker. Yes. We cannot, Honorable Speaker, we cannot, Honorable Speaker, we had a member of parliament is complaining that uh, a governor is uh, disrupting. Your, your time is up, Senator Ledama or Lekena. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, 
it's time for us to reason, and to reason well like a house that unites the whole country. This is a time when I'm pleading to my colleagues from the other side of the aisle. Let us just not make noise today, but actually let it be actionable. This is the only opportunity Honorable. we have. Honorable this is Legal. the only opportunity order. we have. Order, order. You know, order. I'd rather speak, order. I'd rather tell Senator you what Ledama. is on my mind. Senator Ledama, order Senator Fernandi. I don't need your assistance to bring order to Mr. this Speaker. House. Senator Ledama, you started very well. Please, there is no side or there is no honorable senator who has made any noise. Because if you made any noise, I would have thrown them out. Yes. Kindly use parliamentary language. You are doing well so far. Proceed. Mr. Mr. Speaker, you know, the time for reckoning will come. And you know, and I want to be proven wrong on that time. This is the time for us to be able to practice what we preach. Because if we come here and we say our hospitals need medicine, we forget that the Ministry of Health has the largest share of the budget, 131 billion. We are only asking for 15 billion to be sent to 47 counties. I heard yesterday a honorable member of parliament saying that money should not go to counties, should go to CDF. First of all, CDF is illegal. Being illegal, it is imperative for us to remember that our Order, work as legislators May the Senator is to make laws. Be hard so silence. we are making laws, we are dividing money between two levels of government. We have done the calculations, we have institutional, constitutional bodies that advises. The Commission of Revenue has given us a figure. Our Committee on Finance has settled on 415 billion. It is only logical that we go by that professional advice. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to request my colleagues that because we will select distinguished men and women who we know will fight for devolution to be able to go to that mediation committee, please do not come back here saying that you've been compromised. Do not come back here telling us that, oh, you had to give in. It's a give and take. There's no give and take. Let me tell you the hard realities. This Senate does not have money. Today, joint services, parliamentary joint services, has more money. What is this animal called joint parliamentary services? If the Senate itself does not even have money for the, for the committees, what are we talking about here? Let us be realistic. If we do not fight for the Senate, we will go down in history as a house that failed to defend the Senator Kathuri. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, also for this opportunity to give a brief comment on this matter. Mr. Speaker, yesterday the whole country was treated in a lot of theatrics at the National Assembly. It was very shameful to misdirect the country that whatever money that you are requesting for devolution to 415 will, be, will come from NGCDF, GAF, the, the mechanical transfer fund, Mr. Speaker, it was very misleading, especially even from the chairman of the budget committee and the majority leader. Mr. Speaker, you know when we request money for devolution to the counties, all our fathers, our grandmothers, our children, our brothers and sisters are domiciled in the counties. And they need services, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, looking at the list that you have just learned from the honorable members of the county assembly, those are seasoned uh, uh, budget and appropriation committee members, veterans who have been there for the last three times. We went to Parliament at the same time with Dr. Makari Muru. When he is that, in that list, Mr. Speaker, I want you to match me with Dr. Makari Muru this time so that we can be able to, we can be able to understand what we are talking about devolution. Actually, I'm written to the clerk to include me in that mediation committee this time because we must make devolution work. We are not here so that we please some governors. If counties are not working, not all of them, if they are an issue with your governor, go and sort your issues with your governor in your county. Some counties are operating smoothly, executing very good services. So Mr. Speaker, this time I think we want to be bipartisan on this matter. Let us all work together on the giving more counties money. And 415 is not asking too much. 
Maybe next year we want to go to 450 billion, Mr. Speaker, so that also services at the counties can be seen learning and so that we can be able to make sure that devolution works. One thing, Mr. Speaker, that I've realized with His Excellency the President, is the only sitting president who last year, by, by June that of us, made sure that all... All monies will be down the president. Senator Fuck. Asante Mwishima Speaker. Kwa kunipa fursa hii pia kuchangia tarifa kuhusiana na kukataliwa na bunge la kitaifa kwa marekebisho ya msaada ugavi wa pesa za county mwishima speaker. Kwanza mwishima speaker ilikuwa ni sarakasi kubwa katika bunge la kitaifa jana wakati baadhi ya wabunge walikuwa na kejeli kazi zinazofanywa na serikali za county. Mwishima speaker tumeona kwamba pesa zilizoongezwa na serikali kuu kwa county zetu ni shilingi bilioni sita peke yake. Zimetoka bilioni miatatu thamanini na tano mpaka bilioni 391. Lakini tukiangalia wabunge wamejiongezea katika CDF milioni 30 kwa kila constituency. Ukifanya hisabu mheshimiwa ya haraka haraka unapata kwamba CDF imeongezewa bilioni 8.6. Bilioni 8.6. Mheshimiwa spika haiwezekani kaunti zetu zinazofanya kazi kubwa ziweze kupewa bilioni sita wakati county eh, constituency NGS CDF inapewa bilioni nane na nusu. Mwenye speaker tukiangalia pia zile baadhi ya gharama ambazo zimeongezeka. Tukiangalia huduma za, za afya, social, house, house, social health insurance, tukiangalia NSSF, tukiangalia housing levy. Hizi zote zinaongezeka mheshimiwa speaker zinaongeza gharama ya county kwa zaidi ya bilioni ishirini. Kwa mheshimiwa speaker haiwezekani sisi kama bunge la senate ambao ndio tunalinda ugatuzi eh tuweze kuambiwa kwamba county zetu hazifanyi kazi. Kila county mheshimiwa speaker inafanya kazi. Kama county yako haifanyi kazi ni wewe na governor wako. Eh? Kama Kiambu haifanyi kazi ni wao na wamatangi governor wa matangi eh kama muranga haifanyi kazi ni wao na kangata kama meru haifanyi kazi ni wao na kawira lakini wasiweze kwa sababu kama kisia haifanyi kazi ni uroba na na, na simba arati kwa mwishima speaker kila, kila soko mwishima speaker katika wa, uh, sokoni mheshimiwa speaker ukinunua tomato kuna nyingine ni mbovu nyingine ni nzima na ndio hivyo hivyo katika ugatuzi na ndio hivyo hivyo katika CDF kuna wananchi ambao wanalia katika CDF ya, eh, CDF yao hawapati huduma zozote lakini pesa kila mwaka zinakwenda katika CDF ile kwa hiyo na, na wasii wenzangu ambao tutachaguliwa katika Senator Alexander Mundege Pana speaker ni haivu kubwa sana Senator kwa wajumbi. Mazayo. Pana speaker. Order, Senator Munege, just hold it. Senator Mazayo, you've just crossed to the aisle. You have crossed. And you're not supposed to come in between the senator who is speaking and the chair. Proceed, Senator Munege. Asanti, pana speaker, ni haivu kubwa sana katika Kenya MP miatatu na rubaina tisa kusema mangavana wafanyi kazi. Wakati tunajua hawa mangavana arubaine na sapa, wako na maseneta wao na wanja sema wafanyi kazi. Tumesikia hata MP wengine wakisema, hata MC wakipatiwa pesa ipereko wa CDF. Tukasindua, kazi yao ni kazi gani, na wametupatia hivu, anja ya seneta na ngavana, ni sisi maseneta tunafaa tunjue, mangavana wafanya kazi, ama wafanya kazi. Kwa hivyo naomba wale watu tutachagua 
wakienda pale kusungumzia ukatusi wa counties na kutetea mangovernor ambayo wako na sinda ya mambo ya pending bill na wage bill wao wamejikakamua kabisa wasiweze kuletwa down na hao watu kwa sababu ni kitu ya hivu sana kama MP avanyi kazi avanyi kusema ngava na avanyi kazi hiyo ni kitu ya hivu kwa hivyo pana speaker mina unga mkono wale watu wataenda kutetea sisi wewe na usunja lakini watuetea pesa kwa sababu tunajua mwaka uliopita tuliopatia ngava na pesa haikutosa na ikavanya mpaka county haijafanya ile kazi ya ukatusi tunataka mambo ya county ni mambo ya hospitali ni mambo ya manji ni mambo ya kusaidia watu masinani kona sote kwa hivyo mimi naunga mkono wale watu wataenda kutetea sisi waende kama ni nyumba ya juu na wasiletwe down na wale MP ambaye ni watu watao kula pesa wamepatiwa pesa kila county kila MP ako na pesa milioni moja na hamsini na pesa ya parapara kila MP pe milioni hamsini na tunjui hiyo pesa inafanya kazi gani kwa sababu kazi yao ni ya kupeana ni ya kupeana mambo ya zure ya tukatai na hiyo ingine ni ya kunjengea uh, NDC manyumba sao kwa hivyo ni aibu kubwa sana ile pesa inaenda kusaidia mwananchi ambaye ameripa usuru Arabu ndio MP anasema eh, ngavana avanyi kazi ni kitu aibu nataka kuambia ma MP wote MP akuna yoyote anavaa kuonesha ngavana Kindore angesema ni sisi Maseneta tunavaa tufanye hiyo kazi. Asante na unga mkono. Bwana Senator Order Honorable Senators. Senator Eddie Okech. Mr. Speaker, I think it is high time that the Senate these honorable senators and the people of Kenya march on the streets and take these MPs out of out of, out of Bunge. Because MPs, MPs, MPs have decided to just be selfish. They are extremely selfish because think about it. The money we are talking about here, number one, they are mis misdirecting the country. The money we are talking about in Division of Revenue is superior to the idea of CDF. And the money we are talking about here, Mr. Speaker, has got nothing to do with CDF. The senators that you are seeing here, the people of the country should know that these senators are not selfish compared to the members of, 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 of uh, National Assembly because the senators are fighting for money to go to the people. It's not the money that the, the senators are going to control. These monies are going directly to counties and to the people. But MPs are seeking to reinvest money that they're going to control, that they're going to use for their own benefit. And number two, Mr. Speaker, the money that we proposed as Finance and Budget Committee, Mr. Speaker, in reality, it is only 13% of the money that is going to be raised in this country as projected revenue. So it's high time that MPs do understand that the money we are sending to devolution is the only money actually that goes directly to solve the basic needs of our people in the grassroots. And I hope, Mr. Speaker, that I'll be in that, in that committee so that we help the MPs see the sense that the money we are sending to the grassroots is the money that, first of all, looks at agriculture. Number two, it is the money that looks at health care. It is the money that also looks at housing. It is the money that pays workers in the counties. And this money is superior and is, is, in, is, is in no way interfering with the monies for CDF or interfering with the money for CARA or interfering with any other money that MPs are selfishly reinforcing for themselves. It is high time that we work together as, as, a, as a members of parliament, that is the National Assembly and the Senate, to actually make devolution work. MPs should start understanding that this is the only house, the Senate, that can, be, uh, that can ensure that the issue of basic needs in the grassroots can be able to be uh, supported. Because right now, Mr. Speaker, if you, if you look at it, the money that MPs are, that keep, keep on re 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 fencing, 
those money do not go to the basic need of our people. They don't, they don't address the issue of, of bread and butter. They don't address the issue of... Senator Newton, the very last. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also join my colleagues in uh, uh, condemning uh, the decision by the members of the National Assembly to deny counties uh, the monies that we have requested for. Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to remind the members of the National Assembly that their constituencies, which they like talking so much about, exist in counties, Mr. Speaker. And that when this money is sent to counties, it is being sent for appropriation by the same people that they serve in the constituencies, Mr. Speaker. One thing that the members of the National Assembly must remember, Mr. Speaker, is that health is devolved. And they do not deal with health in their NGCDF, Mr. Speaker. They must remember that their parents at home, their brothers, and all those that are related to them, when they get sick, they go to the, to the, to the medical facilities that are under the counties, Mr. Speaker. And lest they forget, let them know that a disease, poor health, does not choose whom to get to. At least for the sake of health, yes. Mr. Speaker, the members of the National Assembly must give way, must give in to the request that we have made for monies to counties, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, and I think my colleague Eddie has talked about it, we are the only sober house, Mr. Speaker, in this parliament. And why do I say that? It is because the money we are fighting for is not going to come to us. We are here talking about monies that are not going to come to us. And so this is not a selfish argument, Mr. Speaker. We are speaking for Kenyans. The members of the National Assembly must know that this is money going to counties. And Mr. Speaker, I want to, take a, to challenge my majority leader here. What this is, is a matter order. Order, that requires... Order, Senator Newton. What this is a matter Senator Newton. Order, Senator Newton. Senator Newton, you're totally out of order. When the chair speaks, you shut up. Can you yield? Can you take your seat? Can you give the microphone to the majority leader, please? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I know this is a, this is a very emotive issue. And for those of us that have been around this roundabout for a while, we know a few things about how to win and how to lose this battle. Mr. Speaker, did you hear the Senator for Muranga, my good friend, Senator Joe Nyoto, have it on record and uh, just pause that, Mr. Speaker, and reflect on the fact that our standing orders provide clearly for relations between both houses of parliament. We may have misgivings about certain members of the National Assembly, but I'd wish to draw the attention of the House not to reduce this to be a battle between the National Assembly and the Senate, because certainly it is not. Mr. Speaker, the Senator from Muranga has gone on record saying this is the only sober house. That implies that there is a sober and a drunk house. I don't think, I don't think Mr. Speaker, that uh, such comments uh, Order, Mr. Speaker, order, honourable senators. Mr. Speaker, I don't think that uh, it is fair of us to castigate an entire house and cast aspersions on them based on the sentiments of one or two people that we may not agree with. Finally, you know, Mrs. Mr. Speaker, I'd wish to plead with colleagues. Uh, I know this is very exciting. I see Senator Sifuna is very happy about this, and the rest. You know, uh, Mr. Speaker, this Majority is not a... leader, you have made your point of order. You did not... Uh, you why, are making a speech. Why am, I, why am I being... Majority leader, you've made your point of order. May I, may I just make a... Order, Senators, order. Senator Mogheni, order. Now, Senator Newton, uh, while you're debating, however emotional you may be, let us use parliamentary language. The House 
that is called National Assembly is honorable just like the Senate. So when you're referring to the other house, please refer it with some decorum. Now that you've concluded your remarks, we will let the matter, we will order, we will we'll terminate, we will terminate that debate there. And I will ask the clerk to proceed to call the next order. Before the clerk call the next order, honorable senators, allow me to invoke standing order 45 to, to rearrange the sequence of today's order paper for the convenience of the house. We will move to handle order 12 and thereafter resume normal flow of business as contained in today's order paper. Clerk, you may proceed to call that order. Order number 12, Committee of the Whole, the Gambling Control Bill, National Assembly Bills number 70 of 2023.